welcome to my channel on chemistry lessons make sure you like and subscribe this is a BTEC applied science lesson it's unit 5 chemistry and it looks at the electrolysis of brine so in terms of learning AMA1 then this fits down the bottom here the electrolysis of brine to produce sodium hydroxide hydrogen and chlorine and we're going to look at two different types of cell. So we're going to look at the diaphragm cell and the membrane cell. Now, if you haven't already looked at the previous videos on electrolysis, then I suggest you go back now and you watch this video, which is ease of electrolysis, before you continue with this video. So let's have a brief introduction then. So what is brine? Well, brine is literally salty water. It's sodium chloride dissolved in water, so aqueous sodium chloride. And three useful products are made from the electrolysis of brine. We make chlorine gas, we make hydrogen gas, and we make sodium hydroxide solution. Now, chlorine gas is used an awful lot in detergents, uh, cleaning products. Hydrogen gas can be used as a fuel. It can be used in fuel cells. Sodium hydroxide, again, has some cleaning properties and can be used to produce bleach and other cleaning products. And there's two main types of cell. There's the diaphragm cell and there's the membrane cell. So we'll be looking at both of those. First of all, then, we're going to look at the chemistry, what's actually happening at the anodes and the cathodes, because this is electrolysis. Now, reminding you that aqueous means we also have hydroxide and hydrogen ions. So we have the sodium and chloride ions from sodium chloride, but we also have hydroxide and H plus because it's aqueous. Again, you will know that from the previous videos on ease of electrolysis. So what's happening at the anode in this case then? Well, at the anode, we will be making chlorine gas. Two chloride ions become a chlorine and two electrons. So electrons are lost at the anode and chlorine will be formed. At the cathode, hydrogen gas is produced. Two H plus gaining two electrons to become a H2 molecule. So hydrogen gas is formed there. So we've got a gain of electrons at the cathode and the loss of electrons at the anode. That means that the sodium ions and hydroxide ions are left behind. So there's a solution containing sodium hydroxide at the end, which is useful. So you can see your three products here, chlorine gas at the anode, hydrogen gas at the cathode and sodium hydroxide left in solution. There's our three useful products. It is worth pointing out that we will get a small amount of oxygen formed. So you do actually get a small amount of oxygen because of this reaction at the anode. So let's take a look at the diaphragm cell then. So we can see that brine is pumped in there on the left hand side. We've got a diaphragm in the middle which separates the two solutions but it does allow the movement of the ion so we can get the movement of molecules across that membrane. Notice how the level on the left is higher than the level on the right. So it's always maintained that way. So the brine is pumped in to maintain a higher level on the left hand side of that cell in order to make sure the flow is from left to right. So to ensure that the brine always flows from the left to the right to prevent the backwards movement of the sodium hydroxide, because the sodium hydroxide is our final solution. Remember, that's the final solution that we're left with and that is removed. Now, in this diaphragm cell, in a diaphragm cell, some of the brine will still be left in your sodium hydroxide. So your final solution is sodium hydroxide and brine. You can see hydrogen gas is collected above the cathode and you can see chlorine gas is collected above the anode. A membrane cell then. So what's the difference? Well, the membrane cell here only allows the movement of positive ions. So the sodium ions can move across, but nothing else, the other ions won't. So the water, the chloride won't move across. So why, why does this, or what difference does this make? Notice how the flow 
So fresh brine is in and the brine doesn't move across. That means that the solution you are left with doesn't contain brine. So the membrane cell, the sodium hydroxide solution is purer. Whereas in the diaphragm cell, our sodium hydroxide at the end contained brine. In the membrane cell, it doesn't, okay? And again, at our anode and our cathode, you can see that the anode is chlorine gas, just as it was before, and the cathode is hydrogen gas, just as it was before. And that's the end of this lesson. So please make sure you like and subscribe and look out for those future videos.